السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين وبعد then just to take inshallah 10 minutes of your time in these blessed nights of the month of Ramadan just to remind you something of the usul and the foundations of da'wat al-salafiyya then from the foundations of al-da'wat al-salafiyya is al-ikhlas is al-ikhlas there comes a narration <coughs> that all of you I'm sure very familiar with from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu who said qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل مريء ما نوى that indeed actions are but by intentions and everyone shall receive in accordance to that which he intended فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله and whomsoever migrated for Allah and His Messenger then he then his migration is for Allah and His Messenger وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتَهُ إِلَى دُنْيَا يُسِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِهُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجْرَ إِلَيْهِ And whomsoever migrated for a worldly need or for a worldly desire or for a woman's hand in marriage then his migration is for that which he migrated for. The hadith reported by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim and Abu Dawud and Tirmidhi and Nisa'i and likewise Ibn Majah and the hadith is of course agreed upon by the two sheikhs, Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Then with regard to this hadith, the ulama have stated that this hadith is from the jawami' kalim al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is from the concise speech of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that encompasses much. Imam al-Zuhri rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions that the jawami' Al-Kalim, or these comprehensive words of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that have within them much meaning, that its meaning, this term, Jawami Al-Kalim, in that hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that has been narrated from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, that he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Bu'ithu bi Jawami Al-Kalim, that I was sent with the Jawami Al-Kalim, the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. Imam Zuhri mentioned that the jawami' al-kalim from that which, has been, that which has reached us is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gathered for him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many different affairs that were written in the books that came before him in a single point or in two points. Meaning that in the words of the Prophet sallallahu sallam, that though the words were small in terms of their number but they encompassed much. So much so that books that were written before could be gathered by the Prophet ﷺ in a single term or in two terms, meaning in few words, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is from that. And that's why Imam Shafi'i mentioned, as has been mentioned or has been, has been cited from him by the great Imam al hafidh ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, that Imam Shafi'i said that this hadith is a third of ilm. That one third of all of knowledge is encompassed in this one hadith. That indeed actions are but by intentions. And for, and for every person is that which he intended. And Imam Shafi mentioned that this hadith is a third of all knowledge. And then he mentioned that 70 chapters of fiqh enter into this hadith. That 70 chapters of fiqh entered into this hadith. Ibn Daqiq al-Eid rahimahullah ta'ala in his explanation of the 40 hadith of Imam al nawi that he mentions, and the reason for this, the reason for this, is that that which the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that which he gathers, or that which he attains, is either with regard to that which is in his heart, or that which is upon his tongue, or that which is upon his outward body, meaning upon his limbs. So therefore the niyyah, is one of the aqsamu thalatha that the niyyah, this intention that is in the heart, is one of these three. Why? 
Because that which, the, that which the servant gathers together is what? That which is in his heart, that which is upon the tongue, and that which is upon the limbs. This hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is talking about that which is in the heart. So therefore it is a third of the religion. And it is a third of knowledge. And 70 headings of fiqh and enter under this heading. Likewise, Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullahu ta'ala, he used to say that the meaning of this hadith, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ That indeed actions are by intentions, meaning, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ الصَّالِحَ بِالنِّيَاتِ الصَّالِحَ That indeed the righteous actions only come about by way of the, of the righteous niyyah, meaning the righteous intentions. So therefore, in this, with regard to this hadith, my brothers and sisters, we find that Salafiyyah itself is rooted in this hadith. Meaning that from the fundamentals of Salafiyyah is that the Salafi is mukhlis, that he is righteous, that he establishes his outward actions based upon that which is inwardly present. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ struck an example of the hijrah. The hijrah meaning the migration. The hijrah in the shara or in the legislation is to leave alone that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. And the intent of the hijrah as regard to the example that the Prophet sallallahu has struck here is that the Prophet sallallahu said, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So therefore, he's, he whose migration is for Allah and his messenger, فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Then his migration is for Allah and his messenger. Meaning that the intent is to travel here from Darul Kufr or the lands of disbelief to the lands of Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned here that the one who migrated to Allah and his messenger, then he is the one, then he is the one with sincere intention and action. That his sincere intention and action will be accepted. So if he migrated, meaning that if his heart was to migrate from one land to another land, not for anyone except for Allah and his messenger, then his intention, his action will be accepted in accordance to his intention. And <coughs> likewise, that this individual will be rewarded for that action, Yawm al Qiyamah. Why? Because the outward action is in accordance to that which was inwardly present. And as for he who migrates for Allah and his messenger, from that which is apparent, meaning that his outward action is for Allah and his messenger, but in reality, he only did it for a worldly gain. Then he receives what he intended. In the hereafter, there is nothing for him. Meaning that if his migration in this dunya, or whatever deed that he did, which is outwardly seeming to be for Allah and his messenger, then if his inward desire and his inward intention was for other than Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning other than for Allah, other than seeking the reward from Allah, then his reward is in this life. And in the hereafter, Allah will give him nothing. Allah will give him nothing. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, with regard to this intention for Allah, that a person is always mukhlis for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he always, when he does an action, and he does a deed, that he is always pondering, and always turning in upon himself, and asking himself the question, that this deed that I have done, is it for the sake of Allah? Is it for in the path of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning upon the sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? As Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala used to constantly mention that no one's deeds will be accepted up until the two fundamental conditions are met. So therefore, a Salafi, that he focuses upon these two conditions. The first of those conditions is that the action is sincerely done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he does not seek except the face of Allah. That he says, that he asks himself the question, why am I doing this action? So that's the first question that he asks himself. That this deed that I'm about to do, this speech that I'm about to deliver, or this statement that I'm about to utter, or this act of worship that I'm about to do, or this journey that I'm about to embark upon, why am I doing it? So then the answer to that question to every single Muslim who believes in Allah in the last day, is that this deed that I'm doing, is only to seek the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's only for Allah. So that fulfills the condition of ikhlas. The second question that he asks himself is, how am I to, to, to do this deed? So the first one is, the lima, the questioning. Why? The second question is, the kayfiyah. How, how am I about to do this action? 
So then he answers this question that this action that I'm about to do is in accordance to the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning, has the messenger of Allah prescribed this deed? So now a person may wish to do a deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this deed that he does for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is it done in accordance to the sunnah of Allah's messenger? So does it meet the condition of mutaba'ah, of following the sunnah? So the act of worship that he's doing must be in accordance to that which the Prophet wasallam, that which he did, and that which his companions were upon. If it accords and if it agrees to that, then he has met the two conditions that make his action acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If any of these two conditions are missing, meaning that it is not for Allah, secondly, it is not upon the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then that action is rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person will receive that which he intended in this life. So therefore the Salafi, the person of sunnah, that he establishes all of his deeds upon these fundamental foundations, ikhlas and mutaba'a. Meaning sincerity and following the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.